Europa for a couple of days more. And after that, they're on their own. Many we talk to say they plan to move to nearby motels here, but their biggest fear now is those motels will be charging extra high prices, knowing that the fire has made them so many new customers. I'm John Iander, Newswatch 13 in Reno. Four youngsters in the United States received the gift of life today, presents from a five-year-old Vacaville boy, the victim of an accident. Newswatch medical reporter Gay Yee spoke to the boy's mother, who was faced with a decision of organ donation. We often hear about the recipients. Someone, someplace, gets a heart, a liver, a new chance at life. This is the story about the donor, a five-year-old boy in Vacaville named Ricky Romero. Sunday afternoon, Ricky was riding his bicycle when he was struck by a car. Medical officials say he suffered severe head injuries. By Monday, the boy was declared brain dead at the North Bay Medical Center in Fairfield. And as dictated by state law, the hospital approached Ricky's mother about organ donation. He was declared brain dead yesterday afternoon, and the family at that point was given the option of whether they wanted to consider transplant or not, and they did at that time. I didn't really want him at first. I didn't want him to cut him. But then they told me two little kids needed his kidneys right, right you know, in San Francisco. So I told them they could have everything there, but I didn't want him to take his eyes. I didn't want him to cut his eyes. He had beautiful eyes. Was that a hard decision to make for you? It was hard signing the paper. It was like signing my baby away. Sharon Romero says suitable recipients for her son's kidneys and heart valves were located in the San Francisco Bay Area, and a child in Pennsylvania received Ricky's liver sometime this morning. The transplants can't change what happened here. Nothing can turn back time. But knowing four children are living today because of Ricky does help buffer some of the pain. I feel good about it, but I want him back. Gay Yee, Newswatch 13 in Vacaville. Two-year-old Alan Smith is off the respirator. My son Ricky was only five and a half years old when he died. What can you say when something like that happens? You cry, you ask God why him, and then you try to make something good come out of something bad. When I first spoke to Sharon Romero about donating Ricky's organs, she was very apprehensive. This is natural for parents in tragic situations such as this. One of her first concerns was how Ricky's body would be treated. I explained to her that he would be handled with dignity and that the removal of the organs would not change his appearance. Offering the family the opportunity to donate organs can be a real source of comfort for them. Ricky's organs were donated so that other people could live. He would have liked it that way. He was a very generous little boy. Learn what it takes to be an organ donor. Write to us at Gift of Life. Box 444, San Francisco 
Well, whatever happened to the baby? In tonight's special assignment, our Marcy Valenzuela brings us all up to date. He's being silly when he goes around and knocks his head into the wall. Matthew Fair is quite possibly the happiest, if not the silliest, five-year-old you'll ever meet. And, and there's people who can't handle that. It's too different. And I think for, for me and for my kids, they see nothing wrong. This, you know, that's a normal kid to them. And he is a normal kid. He just happens to have his brain works a little different. Matthew was developmentally delayed and unable to speak. He slipped into this condition at three months old when his mother injected him with heroin. At the time, he had just had surgery for a hernia and thinking she could ease his pain, she used a syringe to inject him with a drug. She got 90 days in the county jail. If he had died, she would have got more time. It was a case that made headlines and stunned even Sacramento's Child Protective Services. It's the mother using drugs during her pregnancy. That's how we usually get a child with drugs in the system, but for a mother to actually purposely inject an infant or a, a, a young child with drugs is very unusual. The story died down in the media, but the child was left hospitalized, and that's when his aunt, Sharon Fair, stepped in. The first day, when, when I went and saw him in the hospital, I just fell in love with him. She already had three children of her own and a fourth child who was killed in an accident. In a way, she needed Matthew as much as Matthew needed her. I decided I was going to have four kids so I would stop crying, but I had three, and then Matthew came along. So I didn't Initially, Sharon served as Matthew's foster parent, but in 1995, she officially became his mommy. When the adoption papers were signed, Matthew was three, but she put his birth announcement in the paper as if to show Matthew was getting a second chance in life, despite his limitations. He can't talk. He's obviously limited. He can't speak. He can sign, but he also has motor delays, so he can't sign like, um, this. he does this for I love you, and this is I love you, and this is yellow, or play, and he does this. To say that Matthew is a handful is an understatement. He literally never stops moving. This is even a quiet day. <laughs> the heroin overdose damaged the sleep center of his brain, so he runs and runs and never tires. I go bowling once a week, and he got kicked out of the nursery. <laughs> Half an hour before bedtime, Sharon has to give him medication so he can sleep. Matt, take your medicine. Only then do things quiet down long enough to reflect on how much Matthew means to this family. When people call him rude names, um, like he's retarded, which he's not, um, I get really mad. He's nice. He's somewhat demanding and very rambunctious, but Sharon wouldn't have him any other way. She marvels at how Matthew is forever smiling and how he's learned to sign about 300 words. His teacher says he's inspirational, and I think that's so true because he just, I mean, you think about where he came from. The odds were definitely against him, but with the love and nurturing he's getting now, Matthew's future is hopeful. Social workers here at Child Protective Services say he's just another in their long list of success stories. Because while we hear tragic cases of children being exposed to drugs, rarely do we hear how these children get helped. To us, a success is uh, whether or not we are able to match these children with a family who is loving, who's going to believe in them and provide them with the permanence so that they can have what normal children have. Who said red? And while nothing can erase the permanent scars these children carry, Sharon is determined to make Matthew's story have a happy ending. Did you say green? No, I said red. You know, it was on the news. It was like Sacramento woman injects baby with heroin. And you know, you don't ever hear what happened to the baby, what happened. And he's a really neat kid. And I'm so glad that he's here. Yes. I said red. On special assignment, Marcy Valenzuela, KOVR 13 News. You're a good mom, Sharon. Matthew, you're a lucky, lucky boy. Marcy tells us, according to the CPS social workers, every month at least 50 babies, 50, 50, are born exposed to drugs in Sacramento County alone. 
Each one of those cases gets investigated, and if the parent agrees to drug treatment, the child may be allowed to live at home. Otherwise, the baby is then placed into foster care. Any woman giving birth to a second child who tests positive for drugs will have her children taken away immediately. Still ahead on the 10 o'clock news, a massive mudslide plows through a home in Seattle, killing a family of four. We'll show you the devastation and tell you why other homes may also be in danger tonight. Hi, Dave Bender live in the KOVR Weather Center. Doppler radar still active this evening with periods of rain and snow at the higher elevations. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Here's a look at your high temperatures. 59 in Woodland, 55 in Sacramento, 56 for Stockton, mid-50s for Modesto, upper 40s for Quincy and Alta Sierra. More news straight ahead.